Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I replace the cells inside of a power tool battery pack. This Ryobi battery pack is an 18 volt. Some of the ones you'll see at Home Depot and Lowe's or online may be thicker. The only difference is if it's 18 volt and it's thicker, it's going to have more capacity. So you're going to have twice the number of cells placed in parallel. The method shown in this video applies to not only this brand, but other brands as well. This battery pack stopped working about a week ago, and if you spin it around over here, push this button, some rapid flashing going on, and the capacity was very poor after using it for years. It only ran for a few minutes, and then it started to die out, so it's definitely time to replace the cells. Inside this battery pack, which you're going to see in a minute when I open it, are five 18650 lithium ion cells. If you do decide to replace the cells inside of your battery pack, then I suggest you use quality cells made by either Panasonic, LG, or Samsung. So the ones I have right over here might be hard to see, but Samsung 18650-25R. The rating for these cells is around 2500 milliamp hours. So it is going to be a higher capacity than the ones that were originally installed at 1.5 amp hour. There is no protection installed at the positive end of these cells. Sometimes you'll have a module connected at the end. You don't need it because the circuitry inside this battery pack is the protection that's going to be used. And as you can see, you wanna make sure you purchase a flat end. You don't want any projections sticking out because there may be a problem when you go to reinstall them that they stick out too far preventing the case from going back together. Depending on the brand, the case is going to be connected differently. This one here uses, if you look at the top, a tamper-proof Torx, it's a T10. Other brands may heat seal the battery pack, making it very difficult to replace the cells, but you really wanna inspect them very carefully, and if you can't find any screws, peel off some labels and look under the labels. You may have some screws located at the very corner of different brand battery packs underneath some rubber plugs or a label. So let me get started. There are plenty of screws on here to remove. Okay, I removed nine screws from this battery pack and you can see right here, one of the holes had a little plastic plug in it right in the corner, very carefully. Try and lift this top off. This is a look at the inside. You can see there's a metal plate right here. And it's right over this spot here, which is a fuse. Excessive current will cause this to blow, and it just protects the plastic from melting. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the tool locking clips. We just lift up, remember the way they go angled outward, so you put that in there and it angles out. The next step is to be able to access the cells in order to replace them. Now for this particular model here, just pull off these rails on the side. Over here, that's just a temperature sensor, a thermistor. I'm gonna peel this away and very carefully I'm gonna keep this. You may have tape that looks like this right here. That's called captain tape. You might wanna have a roll of that on hand. Comes in very useful when you're rebuilding battery packs. So I just wanna lift up this little thermistor right here. Don't damage it, keep it curled up. So now we can see the whole battery pack. As you can see for this battery pack, the way these cells are secured are inside of plastic tubes. I happen to like this design. Other designs, they're just all lined up and just stuck inside of a plastic housing with some adhesive tape, but I do like this. They're pretty easy to replace. We're going to be making a cut here, here, here. Then we're also going to make a cut in the middle and the middle. We wanna be able to push them all the way through and out the opposite side. Before you do any cutting, Use your smartphone, take a photograph, so you know exactly how it has to be connected. In my case, this wide one right here, 
this wide piece of metal goes to positive, then we have negative and positive together, negative and positive together. Flip it around, we have the negative on the wide piece, and then we have positive, negative, together, positive, negative. Cut here, cut there, cut there. Let me show you the extra tools you're going to need in order to get this job done. I'm going to use this cutter right here. That's going to be used to cut this metal tabbing for a spot welder. Let me show you the spot welder. And this one you see here, I've had for many years. It still works great. I'll place a link in the video description area. We can pick up all these things to make it easier. And the last thing you're going to need is a micro cutter. This is normally what I use to get in here and make these cuts. You can also use a Dremel. A Dremel will cut this very easy with an abrasive wheel. And I'm going to make a clean cut outside so there's no dust right in the exact spots where I need all the cutting done. Then I'll bring it back in and show you. It only takes five minutes using a Dremel. Here you can see clean cut, clean cut, clean cut down the center as well. You want to very carefully reach under this tab and fold it in this direction. So I could do this with the camera right in front of me just to show you. And when you do that, make sure you do not gouge the outside jacket because you can create a short between the positive and the negative which is the jacket so just very carefully just reach in let's use that hook and just pull okay see that now i can actually bend it in now it'll be able to pass through the tube easily and out the other side i'm going to bend each one to the correct position and you can see on the opposite side Everything is also cut very nicely, straight down the line. I also made a negative mark where the negative starts. And on this side, a plus red positive where the first cell goes in. So let me bend these all into the correct spot. The micro cutters works excellent for this. Just rotate it like that. Get under it. Rotate it like that. And this one here looks like it's pretty good, but let's do a little bit on this one. Bring it in. Excellent. Now this side. That's all clear. The only thing I have to do now is just right here, lift up on these areas. Just get under it very carefully. Just wiggle. Pop it up. Keep your finger over the top. Like I said, and yours may be a little different than this, but just be careful with the connection points, you do not want to damage them. So that looks pretty good. So now if I go this way, you can see that the cell is ready to be slid out. One down, slide this one through. This one through. Okay, you see this green plugs? This one will go back right over there. So now this is all ready to go. Let me slide in the new cells. Beautiful. That's what it was. And that is a great fit, guys. Check that out. You don't get better than that. This, like I said, this particular brand makes it really easy to swap the cells out. So what I want to do now is we're going to cut strips of tabbing to go between the terminal right here, the positive. It's going to come up over the top at a 90 degree angle and it's going to go straight close to the board. Turn on the spot welder, push and hold. This uses lithium polymer cells inside. And you can see it's flashing four red lights. That's the highest setting. Let's put this over here. I'll show you this one first. So what you want to do is you want to hold one side down, push hard, and then this side here. All right, you see how solid that is? I'm going to do it again there and there. I want to do at least four connection points because there is going to be a fair amount of current going through. So without really blocking the camera here, not easy. Push down hard right there. 
and again. And I'll do two more in the middle. All right, so this has six connection points. Next thing I want to do is bend this down and let's see how good I cut it. And it's cut perfect. So let's put one there, push hard, and one here. Push hard. Excellent. Do it again, right? And then push hard. Wow. Okay. So that one is perfect. Push it forward a little bit. And you can see it's nice and flat. Now to do these, to join them together, is very simple. Take the tabbing material and you're going to bend it as shown. Okay, so it goes this way, it flops over, and then it 90s going up. So you have that little 45 degree bend to make that happen. And you're going to line it up just like that. See how nice that is? Take this one here, bend it over the top, spot weld it, spot weld it, spot weld it. And there you can see how beautiful this looks, all spot welded. This is back with the thermistor in position. This side is complete. If you find that your spot welder is having difficulty going through a double folded section of the tabbing material, before you fold it back to go up, spot weld it first. This way you're not going to see the spots on this side. It'll be hidden underneath this tabbing material. Then you go forward, bend it, and spot weld it all onto the area there. So now I'm gonna flip it around. Bend these down. Put them right in the spot where they have to go with these little holes. And then do the rest of the spot welding. Let me do that, come back, test it out, and make sure that it works. This is done. Let's push the button and see what's going on here. Where is it? All right, it's rapid flashing. That means it needs to be reset. The way you do that, if you look right over here, it says, I believe, J1. You want to short this opening and the opening just under this red wire. So take a paper clip and put it between these two. And when you hold those two together, you're going to push this button over here. And that should reset it. So let me do that for this one. You put it in both holes. and push the button. Okay, let's see. That should reset it. Yep, and you can see the battery voltage is now down low. So now I just gotta put this on charge. And that is it. So very simple to replace these cells, especially in this type of a battery pack. Let me put it back together. You can see the rails are back on. No interference with the cells that I installed. They don't stick out too far. Let me put all the screws back in, take it over to the charger and make sure that it charges. And it's charging good. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up and share. Thank you very much for watching.